Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to On Deck with Dawson and Dawson. We're extremely lucky today to have Kathleen McEntee with us. Hey, Kathleen, how are you doing? Great. How are you doing, Kathy? So excited to have you here. For those of you who don't know Kathleen, because most of you do, all 20,000 listeners, I'm sure, uh, Kathleen is the president of Kathleen McEntee and Associates, LTD, and they do all kinds of marketing. So today you're in for a real treat. Kathleen's going to share some of her secrets I've heard. Is that right, Kathleen? Yes, absolutely. And you do have something you're going to email to our listeners. This is a big bonus. So like 10 things that are key marketing things. Is that right? 10 marketing secrets for success. Yes. Starts a, uh, an interview with giving something away first. You're so you're such a clever marketeer. <laughs> so let's hit it then. Uh, tell me a little bit about how marketing has changed since the pandemic. I, I see your posts. I'm so encouraged by them, and you are on it. So tell us all. <laughs> well, you know, before the pandemic, marketing was still kind of impersonal, right? Right. Then the pandemic hit, and as we told our clients. In order for you to retain your business, whether your business is closed or whether you're open and people are freaked out about working with you, you have to communicate with your customers and you have to make it personal as though you're speaking to them. And so we changed up how we were, how we were communicating and the channels we were communicating through for our customers to make it much more personal much more communicative so that they were approachable, so that people understood exactly what was going on. And so people kind of had a stake in their business as well. And that's really been the emphasis of marketing since mm -hmm. the pandemic. And then even though we're kind of on the other side of it, although these days, who knows, that still close customer relationship, that personalization, that heavy communication has still benefited and is necessary because there are so many consumer choices these days. Wow. There are other business choices these days. Right. And many businesses changed up what they did and how they did it. They needed, they, and many of them retained how they changed their business, whether it was delivery options, mm -hmm. adding products, changing right. out products for what they did, right. ways in which they were servicing their customers. That sort of communication continues to live on, or that sort of, those changes live on, so the communication needs to continue. Excellent. Well, I think you're super astute, uh, obviously, um, to be ready with your arms around your clients and prospective new clients during that time. I know for us in staffing, we were just, we just didn't want to touch anybody because you know, calling to see if they have a job opening was a little inappropriate, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of clients probably felt the same way of yours. Like, how do I actually let my clients know that I care about them and I'm here without sounding like I'm trying to get something from them because I'm not. And so your ability to put that in perspective and again, be that sort of person next door who understands and, and, and helps them work through those challenges is super important, I think. So um, I'm really glad that you did that because I've mentioned to you that I've listened and seen your posts before. And yeah. I love that about your marketing. It's very positive and upbeat and um, influential in a positive way, which I think is hard to get these days. Yeah, we try not to use negative words or wow. any kind of a negative spin or bash the competition. And, you know, yeah. I believe in taking a high road or don't take any road. <laughs> one, of, one of the things though, that was very successful during the pandemic, before the pandemic as it was important, but even more so during the pandemic. And now that we're, you know, whether we're on the other side of it or not remains to be seen, but continues is video. Right. So it was like pulling teeth because you know, in many cases, well, in all cases, none of our clients wanted to see us during the pandemic, which is okay. Yeah. Um, so we kind of trained them to do their own videos. And yeah. it was in a couple of cases, like pulling teeth. I bet. But, but if, if you, if our clients had a video that we um, were able to get to their prospective customers, existing customers, cl colleagues, whoever, Right. To inform and educate them with a little shameless self-promotion at the end. Sure. sure. Those videos got tremendous engagement and we got great response because people wow. almost could see, feel, and touch us, right? Yes, and that's how we know. We all see what video has done through the pandemic. 
and how it has kind of shifted business. Those companies who kind of jumped on board, you know, were open and trying to um, to communicate with people, and then including videos in it. You know, many most of them succeed. So good for you. So tell us how social media has been evolving with all of this craziness. <laughs> well, social media was a key part of the um, of our marketing plans throughout the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It was important pre-pandemic, but we were able to communicate in a nanosecond through social media if anything changed, what right. changes we were making, how we were making them. Right. And we were able to embed video. So, you know, a lot of what, and all, marketing is, you have to integrate everything you do and cross purpose everything you do, because it's all about repetition, 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 right? Because yes. marketing is about staying top of mind. Right. And in these days, consumers are seeing some somewhere around 5,000 um, uh, promotions a day. So if you're going to go from the back of the mind to the top of the mind, you have to pick oh them up at least 25 Five times. 5,000 a day? 5, I well, thought it was that, but now you've confirmed it. Holy oh, yeah. that, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, think about it. You get up in the morning. If you, if you either turn on the TV or listen to the radio, you're bombarded, right? Oh, yeah. oh, you yeah. got to brush your teeth. The ad's on the toothpaste tube, yeah. right? You get in the shower, the... the, 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 the it's the shampoo true. has it, so and then true. you go throughout your day. You don't even have to leave the house, and you're bombarded, right? That's On so the true. internet, you're bombarded. <laughs> so, with all of with everything we're bombarded about, if you want to stay top of mind, the the rule be long before COVID was um eh, you have to have them about seven times, right? Mm-hmm. To get from the back of the mind to the top of the mind. Well, now it's twenty five. Mm. so you know you have to use different mediums mm-hmm. you know some people take an information people take an information differently right some oh, people yes. will read an email other people look on social media other <laughs> people check out a website whatever the case right. may be right but you have to hit them 25 times which means repetition 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 <laughs> consistency 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 <laughs> even though you're sick of saying the same thing all the time it doesn't mean that they saw it <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what your clients. But, you know, you mentioned Twitter as well. I mean, there's just so many ways to reach people yep. today that I, it must be fun for you, but also kind of overwhelming at the same time. Yep. Um, so, but, but social channels, you know, everybody thinks, oh, social media, you know, you've got LinkedIn, you've got <laughs> Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got TikTok, you've got Snapchat. But you know what? All those different channels have different audiences. So the first thing you have to do is figure out who your audience is, right? And channel to use to get to them because you don't have to use all of them. Yeah. You know, some of them. I had a conversation. Um, it was with Snapchat about a month ago. They were trying to get me to be a national account, and I asked them for the demographics. Well, guess what? The demographics of their platform, you know, are teenagers. None of our uh, clients, none of our clients do business with teenagers. No buying power with teenagers, huh? No, no, no. You know, we have a lot of manufacturers, we have distributors, we have professional sure. services, none of whom are, are marketing to teenagers. Yeah. So the social platform need, really needs to be married up with who your audience is. Yeah. Then you can figure out what to do on the social platform. Sure. And of course, you have to have a decent message. You have to be able to explain yeah. what you do and how you do it real quickly so that people get it and yeah. so that you can tell them how or why you're different than other people in that space. Yeah. Well, it used to be the customer experience. Everybody thought the customer experience, oh, they become a customer and then they get the experience. Well, guess what? That's not really the case. <laughs> the customer experience really begins when they, when they first come in contact with your firm. So whether it's through social media or an email blast or checking you out on your website and everything has to be consistent. And then it's throughout that journey when they're maybe a prospective customer and then they become a customer and then the aftermath too, because people want to do business and people, first of all, want to feel good about who they're doing business with. Right. Second of all, they want to feel good about who they've done business with. And if they're going to come first cir- full circle and do business again, they want to remember that good experience 
and be nurtured through the aftermath of that first, first experience. So right. that's really what marketing does. Well, I have to say to all of our listeners, Kathleen's got a lot going on, as you can tell, and she has a little bit of knowledge about a lot of different things and a lot of knowledge about marketing and PR. So you're really lucky to get some audience with Kathleen and you have these tips that you're going to send, right? Yes. Um, uh, it's kind of a summary of everything we talked about. Wonderful. Basically 10 marketing secrets. Love it. Success, and I'm happy to send it to any of your listeners. Outstanding. Yes. yes, yes. Well, I would say that anybody that's listening to this that wants them, just type them in the chat uh, below, and then Kathleen will send you your information, because that's super exciting and really grateful that you did that, Kathleen. Our listeners will love it, and they'll be better for it. And who knows, you might get a few clients, too, and they'll be lucky to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. All right. You can take care, Kathleen. Thank you very much, Kathy. I appreciate it, and you have a good day. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.